It's 5 p.m. on a warm summer afternoon in Los Angeles, California. While most are taking advantage of the California weather, there's a group of others that sweat inside the door of a local gymnasium for the game they love. Premier exposure, competition, and instruction are found on these courts, where Dinos is preparing for the ninth year of the Pangos All-American Camp. And like every year, basketball's elite flock from around the country in hopes to make a splash at one of the most elite events at the grassroots level. The Pangos All-American Camp started in 2003. It's kind of the same year we had the, um, the biggest Pangos Dream Classic with LeBron James at UCLA decided to um, kind of do something a little bit more different for the underclass kids in the West Coast and kind of make it with a national flavor. Grassroots basketball, the summer starts here. For the last several years, the summer starts here. So whatever happens here is going to resonate throughout this country. It's a great, great opportunity for you guys to really set the tone. The last four or five years, the number one player in the country has been at this camp. The last several years, the talent level has been off the charts, and it's really, um, I think, created an atmosphere with the gym and the intimacy of the, of the gym that we use, of, of a very competitive but fun environment, and the exposure um, second to none. At Pangos All-American, talent is prevalent, but what will set you apart is sacrifice and dedication to being one of the elite players in the country. To follow in the footsteps of the greats who have traveled through these doors, you must share the passion and the love for the game. Uh, I think it's just a passion for the game. I've been watching it ever since I was three. I've been playing since I was three. So I mean, uh, I just love the game and love watching it and love playing it. It's a great experience and I feel blessed to be here and, and get to play this game. I love the game because of how much time I put into it. The way the ball goes through the net, I don't know, I just love it. I have, I've been playing since I was four years old and. I don't know, I've just, I've just loved the game since I was that age. I saw a video of me trying to play basketball when I was barely walking, so I mean, it's been with me for, uh, since I was born, really. As it is every year, the talent pool runs deep. For some, egos are broken. For others, confidence is gained. Playing the best means you must be at your very best every second of camp. I mean, it's great to just see what you have to work on to just watching different people's games. You can see like what you need to go home and work on when you uh, get back to your hometown. Well, I think it's a very good camp. Uh, it's a lot of great, great players here, you know, get a lot of exposure for yourself and others. And um, I'm just looking to come in here and make myself better and help everybody else get better. This camp and the NBA camp kind of is the first stage in these guys understanding that you got to bring it every single game. There are no games to take off. And so for me, that is a great evaluation tool to watch these kids have as they go from Friday to Saturday to Sunday. The kids that stand out here against the great competition are the ones that are already establishing themselves as somebody that, that needs to be at the top. Here we go, one time. If there's two of you that make it to the NBA here, we've done good. On day one, Dave Miller sets the tone. As a former NBA coach and current ESPN analyst, he knows what it takes to succeed at the highest level. Well, I was an assistant coach at the University of Southern California back in 1995-96, and that's when I first came in contact with Dinos. The great thing with Dave is he brings tremendous passion and energy to whatever he does, and that really sets the tone um, for the camp. And this camp had not been going on, but he was one of the few guys in the country in terms of AAU coaches, if you will, even before his scouting service that I really liked and I was attracted to because he cared about the kids. Dave Miller told them when he was talking with them, if you don't have the passion, then why are you here? Come on up here quick, let's go. Get some passion. Can't get up, give me 10 push-ups. If I come in assuming that these kids don't know how to set a screen, they don't know how to receive a screen, the names change, the faces change, but fundamentals never change, and that's what you have to build upon as a player. Coach Miller, he's coaching the NBA, so you just try to absorb it and be a sponge, 
and uh, and just listen to him and, and try to do the stuff he says and incorporate it in your game. Uh, just what he says, just, he, it's like he's basketball smart, I say that. One thing I really remember well, he said, uh, don't use the basketball, don't get used by it, you know, and that's something that really stuck with me. This year's camp holds two of the most dominating big men in recent time. Isaiah Austin, a smooth seven-footer, shows a nice combination of finesse and power. His style is opposite of the other big man in camp, Andre Drummond, who leads with power first and finesse second. Dinos didn't keep anyone waiting for the most anticipated matchup. The battle took place on court two in the first night of camp. Uh, the first round game between uh, Isaiah and uh, Andre Drummond on the opening night really was a, something that I think the media people had been uh, longing to see for a while in, in a camp environment. When, when you look at it, the first night we got two of the best big men in the country go against each other. Early on, Isaiah Austin won, won the battle in the first 15 minutes of the first half. Used his skills, kept his body away, did those things. Then all of a sudden, about 15 minutes into the first half, Drummond takes a ball off the glass. He goes end to end. Guy tries to run in front of him, cut him off. He goes up and over and just smashes it. And from that on, the whole game changed. It was incredible, uh, I think a microscope of, of the two best big guys in the country going toe to toe. And the, and the camp, uh, for the most part, has been about matchups. Uh, matching up the best players in the country, uh, toe to toe, mano a mano. It's good to see because you know you'll see what you get to work on for yourself, and you get to see uh, two good players go at each other. It's, it's fun to watch. Um, I mean, they're they're real good. I think uh, German's gonna be a good player. He's big, he shoots everything. So, I mean, it was a good battle from what I saw. I think German got the best of them though. The competitors, you know, they they go out on the court, they want to be the best. A lot of people made, made a lot of hype about the game, about how it's gonna be a big time game. And uh, we both did well. We went at each other and uh, did the best to our ability. His physicality, the things that he does uh, with his body, those things really started to wear on Austin. Austin didn't play badly. It's just that the physical thing, I think, was the difference. The difference in the game was evident, but Drummond saw things a little more evenly matched. I don't see anything different, really, other than uh, the physical aspect. I'm a little more bigger in weight than he is. But other than that, I think we pretty much do the same thing. This might be something we're still talking about four or five years down the road, maybe even a second or third year pros of who's the best young guy. But I will tell you one thing. In that game, the second half was the difference and it went to Drummond. If you've ever seen Andre Drummond perform on a basketball court, it's no surprise he's projected the number one pick on the next NBA draft. Few players have his combination of size, skill set, and athletic ability at the collegiate or pro level. Well, Drummond is, is probably one of the most physical, imposing players that we've seen since Amari Stoudemire. And his presence alone obviously creates a lot of advantages for the teams that he plays on. He's strong, he's physical, he's extremely athletic. He's much more skilled than people give him credit for. Andre Drummond impressed me a lot too, uh, because it was a lot of guys talking about, you know, how he never plays hard or, you know, he doesn't deserve what he's been. And, um, I think he came in today and proved that he deserves his ranking and that, um, you know, he's one of the elite players in our class and not the most elite. Like, I'm the type of person where I don't really look at the rankings. I don't know if I'm number one, number two. I honestly don't read, I don't read articles about myself. That's not the type of person I am. I'm, very, I'm a humble person. That's a big dude. He surprised me. Good, great footwork, um, can score at will. He's a competitor. Honestly, he's just, he's just as a beast. I mean, he boards, rebounds. He just impacts the game in so many ways, block shots. I mean, he reminds me of Dwight Howard. He's a buff. He's a beast. Man. Honestly, I hate losing. So when I'm on the court, I put everything out there to put my team in a winning situation. So I mean, it, it gives me that adrenaline rush to like, it's that drive to like win the game. Drummond is undoubtedly the best big man at camp, but Shabazz Muhammad has proved to be the most complete player in this event, gaining the highest rank of the 2012 class. I just I just been staying in the gym. That's that's the most important thing. Uh, I mean, I work out about three hours three hours a day on uh, basketball and then lift weights. So uh, I mean, I'm putting in the time. So and then when you put in the time, uh, the hard work that pays off. There was a lot of questions about who the number one player in the country was. He really made a strong statement with his play, uh, earning camp MVP and really being dominant game by game. 
If I'm picking a guy who's going to make plays, score points, get things done, I'm probably picking Shabazz Muhammad. Because now that he's become a jump shooter as well as a dunker, his game is at another level. Uh, when I, the first game when I played Shabazz, yeah, he's, he's a real deal. He's nice. Yeah, Shabazz Muhammad. It was the first time I seen him. He, he's real good. Some of my goals um, next year for high school, uh, win a national championship and uh, having fun with all your friends and then uh, competing on the court. The Pangos camp teaches you skills on the court, but also off of it. Several national media members were on hand to talk to the campers of the importance to play with passion and have respect for the game. If you want to make it in this game, first thing you better have is a love and a passion for basketball. If you don't have a love and a passion, you're fooling yourself. Understand, it's not how many points, whether you started, all those things you do. It's what do you contribute to the end result. Very often they don't really understand what I would call the evaluation process and how these national people evaluate them, what they're looking for, what they value as scouts and media. I told them the fact that 30 some years ago I was working for a Fortune 500 company. I said, I left that to do this because I had a passion for helping kids and for getting the opportunity. I want kids that I watch to have that same passion. How many of you can see yourselves involved with the game of basketball 34 years from now? Okay, then you better have a love and a passion. And I'm not seeing it out here a whole lot. Listening to the scouts talk teach me a lot of things that I probably didn't know at the time and just, you know, re reinforcing things that I did know. Well, I learned a lot from them that I haven't heard of before. It really makes me understand that, uh, you really got to work and be dedicated. Day three shows a sign that the youth have been inspired. Led by 2014 standout Stanley Johnson, the youngsters battled a team filled with older prospects, including senior star Roscoe Allen. Oh, it's terrific. It's a terrific exposure for these younger guys to be able to compete with the better guys who are older, but also to be seen in a kind of an intimate environment guys like Aaron Gordon, who was there last year, who's really skyrocketing. Uh, Jordan Bell was a camp surprise this year and really helped himself. Stanley Johnson, uh, Tyler Dorsey, Steven Zimmerman, Horace Spencer, three, the three top eighth graders in the country who are going to be freshmen this year. And they didn't uh, really dominate or stand out, but it really, really showed their potential. Well, I think this is the experience that really starts to kick off their career because they really need to learn that point of failure and, and some of the things they're doing on the floor that they get to do against their own age group, like, you know, it's a second-hand thing. I mean, they can go by people, they go over people. Here, they're having to learn that you've got to have an extra move. Maybe you've got to take that extra dribble. You've got to step back and, and uh, shoot the ball fading away a little bit once in a while. Different things that they haven't had to do. But they've also held their own. Uh, it's definitely a challenge. I, don't, we're all, I think we're the youngest kids here. And uh, we're playing against the best kids in the uh, 2012 class, which is the best oldest kids. And I think that uh, it's something we can step up to. Uh, it's real good, you know, because to see I'm not the only one at my age doing what I'm doing. There's others like me. And it's just fun going against guys like that myself. It's like a lot of people make you work harder even before you thought you was good, but you need to work on more things. You, it exposes you a lot. I think that, that Stanley Johnson, Jaquan Aaron have had very, very good camps. Uh, done a nice job. Tyler Dorsey was uh, solid in the games I've watched him play. I think from that standpoint, it's really the learning experience because down the road, those are the guys that are going to be carrying the camp and going to be the, the headliners two, two, three years down the road here. After the three days of camp had come to an end, some players were chosen by the media in attendance to participate in two All-Star games. After the completion of the two All-Star games, awards were given out, and another successful camp had come to a close. The reason I, I keep doing this, it's going on 10 years now, is I think a host of reasons. All the friendships, all the uh, memories, 
all the, the competition and the, uh, I think just the overall camaraderie of the players and uh, their experience. Camp was fun, man. I was, I was really looking forward to this. A lot of great competition here and just competitive. And that's what I liked about it. Every game, good players and, you know, I just want to come out here and play hard. I mean, it's a blessing to have all these guys down there. So, I mean, we just come out and just come hard. And, I mean, just try to take every game like it's our last. The sun is shining outside a local gym in Southern California. But for three days, the basketball town was shining even brighter inside at the 2011 Pangos All-American Camp.